Pull up in your drop top. Hello, guys. Welcome to Sunday Tea. And I'm easy tonight because I got two fine gentlemen in here. And I don't want to give them too much of my hips. Just a little bit of that. And a little bit of this. Okay, I'm going to bring it down slowly. Hi, number one. You're the first on. Hi, yes. Lots of love, 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 love. Love you guys. Here I am. I couldn't give you too much wiggle, guys. It's way too much. I'm sitting here tonight. And I have Gail Parr and Donovan Simmons. So I want Mr. Parr to say hello. And Jessica is going to go right to him. Hi, guys. How are you? How you doing? You guys, I can't even see who's on, but they're coming on one by one. And Donovan is in the house from the Jamaican <laughs> Canadian Association. Say hey! Greetings, greetings. So you guys, we're here and we want you guys to bring out all the questions. We want everything. We're talking about our goals. We're talking about the Jamaican Caribbean Association. We're, we're talking about um, Mr. Parr Gale, how he got where he is and how hard he had to work. And we know he studies also a family man. So we want to let you know everything can be done. Everything can be done. Yes, what are you doing to me? Stop it. <laughs> so you guys, I'm going to introduce Pergil and he's going to tell him a little bit about yourself before mm. we get into the question. Then we'll go to Donovan, okay? Mm. So here we go, you guys. Par, tell us something about yourself. Oh, my name is Prop Gil. I'm a uh, member of uh, Legislative Assembly from Calvin Greenway and uh, moved to Canada in 2001. Can you explain when you say from Greenway? Because a lot of people won't understand that expression. Yeah, it's the writing uh, uh, represents uh, the communities of Applewood Park, uh, Abbeydale, Coral Springs, Morley Park, and Terradale, east of 68th uh, Street. Yeah. Okay, and can you tell us what you do? For it's just, uh, you know, I'm a, a, a member of a Legislative Assembly, mm -hmm. so uh, my job is to, so we have 87 writings in this province, so my job is like, uh, along with the other 86 uh, MLAs, to make laws of this, for this land, right, on behalf of what the constituents telling us. So if you say like, you know, uh, carbon tax is good or bad, or whether it's a taxation, whether it's education, whether it's health, so the idea is that we get the feedback from from our constituents and we take it to the legislature and vote on that and debate on that and, and that's how we, those those discussions become become law of the land. Great. So tonight we are going to touch on the carbon tax, that is for sure. Yeah. But right now we're going to let him finish tell you a little bit about himself. Yeah. Uh, so I'm uh, born and raised in India and uh, moved here in 2000. Uh, oh geez, it's getting, I'm getting old. Uh, 2000, 2000 actually. Uh, and uh, I finished my uh, uh, degree in uh, agriculture sciences um, from uh, Amritsar, my hometown. And I came here, and uh, you know, as a new immigrant, you, you come and you do, you know, your survival jobs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I ended up going to um, UBC mm -hmm. um, uh, part time while I was working here. And uh, uh, after that, uh, um, you know, became appraiser, real estate appraiser. And along, I mean, it wasn't as quick as I just told you, like, I had to do, like, multiple jobs and doing part-time work and, you know, part-time studies at the same time, right? But so, if you guys notice what he said, he just said that he was an immigrant, absolutely, right? So absolutely. he had to work his way all the way up. And what absolutely. we're trying to tell them yeah. is it's possible for anybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody. Well, I, I don't think I did like anything amazing. I mean, if you want to, if you really want to, you know, like the people who are great, I mean, we can take a, you know, page out of like people like Nelson Mandela, people, a person like, you know, uh, you know, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., you know, Barack Obama. Like those, those guys are the, the real the movers and the shakers of the world, right? But but it came from all from the a very humble beginning, and uh, and I mean like look at President Obama today, right? Came from a mixed family, humble beginning, and today you know January twentieth I believe is his uh, last day. Mm -hmm. and people say like four more years. He's like no, Michelle's <laughs> gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool though, right? So you're right, Altiyah. 
think I'm just like I'm, I'm a bad example by the way. I think I you're a great example. <laughs> you're just being modest. I think you're fantastic. Right. We're gonna get back to that. We're gonna go to Donovan because we want a little bit we want to know a little bit about him as well. So can we turn to Donovan and Donovan tell them your name and what you do and we well they know that you're from the Jamaican Canadian Association <coughs> and also give them a little brief on the Jamaican Canadian Association. Yeah, so my name is Donovan Simon. I've been in Calgary since 2000. So, you know, like Prav here, moved here from Jamaica. And I, I always use the story that when I, when I left Jamaica in 2000, it was 27 degrees above. Uh, when I got to Calgary, it was minus 20. So, so I understand change. I understand uh, working through a, a tough situation. Currently, I'm the president for the Jamaican Association, the Jamaican Canadian Association, Alberta, which is uh, a community group which reflects and represents the, the Jamaican interests in, in Calgary. There's a similar association in Edmonton and other associations all over, all over Canada. And what, what we focus on is trying to promote Jamaican culture, to promote Jamaica uh, within our new home. So we spend time in the community, we try to spread the word about Jamaica, who we are, our, our proud and very colorful heritage and history. And you know, earlier today we were talking about cricket, right? That's right. And yeah, Jamaica yeah. and the Caribbean has a yeah. very, very rich history yeah. in cricket. Yeah. All right. When I came to Calgary, you know, back in in, in 2000, I, I played some cricket here, yeah. and and there are lots of immigrants like myself who who bring their culture yeah. and heritage with them, because that's important. It's a part. It's a part of of who we are and how we grow as we as we join you know communities like Calgary to, to maintain who we are, the things that are important to us, and the Jamaican Canadian Association is focused on doing that and ensuring that we don't lose that element of Jamaica while we're here. And as we're on the topic of Jamaican Association, mm -hmm. a lot of people have sort of a bad stigma about it, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of things saying that there's a lot of talk but not, nothing ever actually happens and that the association runs away with the money <laughs> and that, the, no, no, because we want to confirm this yeah, to the people yeah. and that the association takes the money to build their homes up and n none of the, 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 the Caribbean people actually get anything out of it. So as you being the president today, yeah. I just want you to explain some of that theory and that you're, you're on the board new, right? Yeah. And what the plans are and then we'll go into some more details. Okay, great. Well. It's, it's always in, interesting to, to hear different perspectives, and we're, we're open to hearing different perspectives. The association is, is focused on programs, A, to, to promote Jamaica, and hence we do different events, we have different programs, we collaborate with other associations. So for example, Taste of Jamaica is an event that we plan and host, and we've been doing it for almost 30 years, right? Where once a year we have this big showcase to, to to explain to people and show people what Jamaica is all about. But I'm From gonna, I'm going to interrupt you for yeah. one second about the taste of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. As a lot of people say that it's a taste of Jamaica, but there's no taste of Jamaica. They don't even find that there's anything Jamaican really involved in it. I just heard tiny, tiny bit of rumors. <laughs> so what I'm saying is there's something that we can change or can we get people to come in? Is there a place? They can come in and put more Jamaican into it because they feel that it's not catering to the Jamaican community or there's not enough Caribbean in it. it? It is an open association to anybody. Anybody in the Calgary community, in fact anywhere, is open to joining the association. And one of the things that I would say to you and everybody is I may have had that perspective before getting involved. Having gotten involved, I realize it's, it's way open and in order for us to change some of that perspective it's doing things like what we're doing here of sharing more about what we do you walk into Chester Jamaica and I promise you you'll get Aki and Selfish I promise you'll get Fried Dumpling I promise you'll get a Jamaican flavor that you'll possibly not expect but you wouldn't unless you're there so for me today sitting here I'm going to say it's an open invitation right for those interested in Jamaica those from Jamaica to come on over and get that view for themselves. But we're not um, we're not only saying from Jamaica either, because we want to bring in the whole world. Oh right? yeah, that for sure. We're... That's what I'm so saying. We're anybody, just, we're just not saying Jamaicans. Oh, we want no. everybody to come in and join in the oh, festivity. Yeah. It is open. Absolutely. 
Okay, I'm going to direct the next question to you, Park. How do you see you and the Jamaican community working together to change things or to educate them? How do, how do you see us changing that? Well, uh, I think the, the first that's the right step. Uh, uh, I mean, a good step in the right direction as, as a community association to bring people, everybody, uh, under one, one umbrella and, and first, like, share the culture and, you know, talk about who we are as a community, where we come from, and what, what we can achieve here uh, with all the opportunities available in this land. So, you know, promote education, promote sports, promote, you know, cricket or, uh, you know, music. I mean, like, you guys got it all, like, from Bob Marley to, you know, Courtney Walls to Chris Gales, like, you, Jamaica is blessed with everything, right? And especially with the food and everything, so Jamaica has a lot of a lot of things to offer to to the world. I think it's just just about uh, getting it started and getting people like behind, saying like, look, you know, we, we can, uh, you know, offer all those uh, great things. And it's all all, all it's going to take is like, you know, getting the association and bringing the important thing is like bringing people to the as as you said that you know open invitation. Whenever you guys uh, hold this like uh, this event for past thirty years, so. So open invitation to the other community, so then they can be part of Jamaican culture and say like, oh, actually like, you know, Jamaicans are not only, you know, people say like, oh, take it easy guys, no, but they're engineers, they're educations, they're, they're business people, men and women, they're, you know, doctors and all like lawyers and stuff like that. So I think you, it's important that as for any community to showcase those things. So how do we, how, and this question is to both of you, how do we actually get our get the culture both culture involved into the community without them finding out there's something against it or there's something behind it because a lot of us try to do things like me trying to do something here bring you guys all together and we do it and we talk about it and we share the information but I find by the next month the next two months the information is forgotten so how do we get it to instill in their head like how do we get the information that you guys are giving them to keep us together as one, how do we get it to instill in their heads? Well, I think, I think first of all, you know, most community associations have the challenge of maintaining interest, especially because it's a volunteer organization, right? Somebody, you were talking about the lifespan of a politician. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, the solution for me is having skilled and committed people Right? And also building solid plans and infrastructure to, to, to keep these programs going. One of the things, for example, the Jamaican Association is focused on this year. So we built a strategic plan for the next five years. So that's sitting down doing some hard work of saying, so how are we going to achieve these goals? And what do we want to achieve? And one thing about our plan is a platform is partnership. So therefore, it was very easy to have a discussion with you and have discussion with others to say, how do we partner with you to achieve these common goals, right? And in doing that, A, we spread the word, but we also build on that platform going forward by acting, ensuring that we don't just talk about a program, we implement these programs to the benefit of the community. Because where people get benefit, they're likely to continue to invest, right? And to spread that word. So that's one of the things that we're focused on this year. But it's a lot of hard work, and therefore it requires skill, it requires commitment, it requires people. So I'm appealing to everybody watching this live and talking to us afterwards to say, how can I contribute? Because without those contributions, we don't move forward. And there's also, um, I mean, I've had a few phone calls, somebody saying they want to get on board uh, the Jamaican Canadian Association. How do they go about it? Where, how do they do it? Um, I can't tell them because I don't know. We, we just rebuilt our website to facilitate that. So we've got a brand new website, okay. jcaalberta.com, where you'll get information about what we're doing. You'll see our plans. Everything's listed there. But if you wanted to be a member, you could actually sign up right there online, right? Uh, you know, we've got a Facebook page. People can jump on, ask questions. And we've got way more activity going on now, right, to support questions, concerns, issues from the community. Okay, I have a question here and it's for Mr. Gill. 
Uh, the question is, what are some of the key services that immigrants should know about? Uh, first of all, like, uh, you mean like the new immigrants or the immigrants? The new immigrants that come in because they're the one that usually lost their ways. And I'm yeah. going to ask you the same oh, yeah, question sure. as well, yeah. but I would like to get your feedback on that. Well, you know, when, when the new immigrant comes into this country, because, you know, I walked on those paths, so, like, so I know very well, you know, it's like, you know, now we have like, uh, Center for Newcomers mm -hmm. open, we have like all those facilities. I don't think 15, 16 years ago they were there. And even if they were there, I didn't have smartphone with me. I didn't have Google access to that. I couldn't search, like, you know, go to Google and say like, oh, where's the center for the new immigrants here, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the new the services is like, you know, getting, uh, first of all, getting your services uh, from federal government, your SIM card, your your health cards and all those things like provincial cards and second would be like when you go to like center for newcomers and these like uh, um, association they can guide you on like how, how are you gonna um, uh, what do you do like counseling like employment resume building like you know all those like things that simple as like how can you get a like a uh, transit bus pass mm -hmm. stuff like that okay. so those those are important things as, as, as a newcomer okay so can you answer the same question for well, me yeah there are tons of services so uh prop talk about the the center for newcomers there's a ccis there's the ethnocultural society okay. uh and also there are many community organizations like the jcaa which which provide information on finding these services because one of the things that we've got to be careful about and I know we talk about that in our association is not rebuilding the wheel if there's a good wheel out there what we want to do is to point you to that wheel That's right. one program we're starting this year is actually a live for Jamaicans thinking of moving here right to share our experiences so you're not hearing it from somebody else you're hearing it from a Jamaican about their path and therefore that will help you who you know either just yourself. move here who's thinking of moving here so that's something in our plan to share that information but we're going to point to those services because the center for newcomers for example which we have been partnering with over the last year is a fantastic facility and nobody is not a that lot of people are not aware yeah of. they're not aware that um, the jcca is a part and partnering with, is partnering with them, with them. Yeah. so now you guys know um again how do we stop the abuse of immigrants that come in the country that don't know these things because I ran into a lot of people that either was paid too much rent, they end up outside on the road, like to where they came from, they they thought that it was hell here. So how is there a place for them to report? Like they need to know their rights as well. And I'll address that to you. Where can they go? What can they do you to know, protect themselves? In like uh, in my writing, that we we have like a lot of challenges like that too. Uh, not every day, but time and again. And there's a lot of abuse with the when it comes to like the temporary foreign workers. Or yes, it's just it's like horrible. All, it's it's just it's just tough to to sit on my in my office and have to listen to those like horrible stories. And it was like, man, like why people have to go through that but all I'm gonna say is like you know the authorities here the community associations please RCMP all those I'm not their I'm not their spokesperson but all I can say with my experience that everybody has a human touch mm -hmm. so we're dealing with a lot of cases that's in similar cases like that and where people being like you know almost like human trafficking kind of thing mm -hmm. right yes yes and and now the authorities come in and they're helping these individuals right and so now my my uh, message to them is you know you don't have to hide your story please go to the community association please go to your MLA come to my office go to Jamaican community go to please go to RCMP they will guide you in a, in a, in a right direction so that we have uh, you know Alberta works we have all those program in place that they'll help these individuals in a dire situation and I was I was also reading that you do some work with the Alberta works I did previously so, Alberta works it's also a government program that's right not immigrants aren't allowed that money I think you have to be uh, you have to be permanent resident get a permanent resident yes. so if somebody was here on a work permit or something like that you could address them that it's not 
feasible for them to no you will not uh, you will not uh, uh, be quali eligible for for those grants uh, I think it, either you have to be uh, a citizen uh, or an immigrant, immigrant immigrant or I think uh, you have to have a, like some sort of like a refugee status too I'm not sure about the refugee okay. status because it's been like a few years that uh, I haven't uh, sat on those boards. Yes, but, yeah. One here. thing I want to add, though. Yeah, just, just, yeah. Right, Go ahead. Is if the program that we talked about from the Jamaican Canadian Association of sharing information, I think is is just one small step in that direction, right? Of mm -hmm. getting people planning to move here. So before you get here, to understand some of the realities on the ground. Okay. Right? I know when I moved here 16 years ago, I would have benefited tremendously if from hearing knew. somebody's story. Or had some right? information. Because it's great to read the website. I think, you know, the CIC website is great. But that's all nice and proper. It doesn't speak yeah. to the realities, right? So today, for example, I go out as a representative of the association and I talk to newcomers. So I've been to CCIS, you know, Center of Newcomers, where people who are, you know, freshly coming in can get a real life perspective of what I have gone through as a professional, as an individual, as a family person, right? So that's one thing that we're going to do. The other thing that we are doing is referring people to the right areas to get support. And that's right? good because I think that... I think that we definitely, 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 definitely need it. <laughs> That's a lot of definite. <laughs> um, do we have any questions out there? No questions so far. We just have a, uh, uh, what is it, comment from Brad. Two good individuals to talk to. They get my vote, he says. Um, we have a lot of people joining in. Uh, Chanel Five says hello. Hi, Hi Chanel. Chanel. Miranda giving hugs and kisses. Ryan Perez says what's up. Hi, Ryan. What's up? <laughs> Sincere is saying hello, and she misses being here. <laughs> That's okay. We got it under control. <laughs> Did you say it was a uh, Ryan Seacrest? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Perez. We're get, we get pretty close. Pretty hey, close. Could, yeah. You know, Ryan yeah. Perez. Hey, so we're, we're, we're dealing with a Brad Pitt or a yeah, yeah, so. break from the Golden Globe. Um, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna go oh, yes. back. Okay, Brad. Okay, now you, it's their personal joke. And Jessica is not watching us to um even, but it's it's a personal joke, Brad Pitt. But can you can you watch us? I am watching. Okay, you. we're gonna try to hit on the carbon tax a little bit before we go back to the JCCA. Mm. Okay, so the carbon tax. Uh, bar. I really, I'm really upset about it. I'm, I'm, I'm living. Choking. You're, it. <laughs> You're choking. And a lot of people out there are scared to death. I filled my tank and it used to cost me $60. Mm -hmm. And I went and filled it when I heard about the carbon tax. And it cost me an extra $15. I'm living. So I paid $75. Yeah. So, Whoa. is it really for the climate, I think it's nonsense, but you can tell us best. Well, first of all, like it's, um, in my humble opinion, it's a, it's a wealth transfer. As we, it's a wealth transfer. Did you guys hear that, please? In just my humble opinion, because I don't think, I mean, like, you know, Canada produces 1.6, 1.7, less than 1.7% of greenhouse gas emission of the world. That's what I thought. Okay. Right? And Alberta is like, I don't even know, like, what percentage of Not, that is I'm that? Not, probably two. <laughs> you know, and, and now, even if we eliminate 1.6% of, like, greenhouse gas emission from the world, we still have, like, 98.4, if my math is correct. Mm -hmm. How is this changing the climate of the world. But it's not. It's that's, a cash cow for the government. It, it is it is some I was reading uh, one article and uh, they were saying that it's almost like three percent uh PST. That's what they because it's gonna generate three billion dollar in revenue. For and that revenue will go into the general the revenue and and I mean it's just a bad, 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 bad tax. But especially when the economy is hurting, mm -hmm. especially when people are losing jobs, especially when, you know, it's winter time, people have to get to work, and now we have like the extra gas price, the four, gas in the house. Four and a half cents uh, for gasoline, five and a half cents for diesel. What about grocery? 
So you know those those measures, those things haven't even been measured yet. But it's right? still taken. I find that it's taken Absolutely. like a five percent interest in it. Yeah, yeah. It's gone up quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, it has to transfer to everything. Absolutely. Right. Fuel costs everywhere impact um, your economy. Diesel right. is the is the fuel, in my humble opinion, moves the moves the country. Whether it's uh, like you know trucking. the trucking trains, and yeah. the trains and the buses and all those things, right? So why are they the, worried about the gas? The diesel is there. The diesel is like uh, increased like five point four. Uh, five and a half cents per liter so that that's that's gonna so when superstore the truck is gonna cost more money to haul groceries uh, guess what we're gonna have to pay more for the milk jug yeah right and <coughs> it's just like a snowball effect and it's no way are going to change people as a habit I mean they it, it may impact some people but that's that shouldn't be the plan the you plan should be to invest in the technology so we can come up with a cleaner technology. So we we give incentive to people who are driving electric cars like Teslas and new Leaf by Nissan and all those like And the people who are putting uh, solar panels, they're being like, you know, rewarded by the government. Like those are the policies should be in place, not not like a shotgun approach and say like, boom, this, this climate... Uh, Leadership uh, action plan, which uh, by the way we call collab. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, hey, it's gonna all of a sudden like uh, make this God's uh, green earth even more greener. It's I think not, it's, it's a cash cow. No, it's a ca it is a cash cow, and yeah. I think what's gonna happen, yeah. it's gonna put a lot of violence. I, and I can notice to see the violence rate just crawl right up. When people get frustrated and they get their back is put against the wall, they tend to get really, really, really violent. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And if you, if I have to feed my child and I can't afford to feed my child, I'm going to take it from your child. Okay. So there's, an, there's an effect coming on where I think it's going to be bad. What about a single mother? Absolutely. She can barely afford to pay daycare. How is she going to, how is she going to do with carbon tax? That's right. Yeah, it's not a choice. Yeah, you know what? And, and another You're thing right. is that <laughs> another thing is like I always give example. Like if we all remember, like 2008 or nine, I can't remember when the auto industry in Ontario was hurting. Mm -hmm. Uh, federal government did not punish those industries even more. Federal government they bailed them out. Didn't they? they bailed yes. them out. So now our oil and gas is hurting. Our people are hurting. Our burdens, average our burdens. We walk around the street, they're hurting. They I mean, are. I'm and, hurting. And what this current government is doing? They're not bailing them out. They're punishing. They're like you know kicking them while they're on the ground. That's what the reality of the land is. That's unbelievable. One second, we'll take a break. We have 11 people out there. Do we have any questions? I am believable. They're just listening because I never hear them this quiet. Faith asks, Parb, what are your thoughts on secondary suites? Secondary suites, I believe, uh, have to be, you know, the affordability uh, of homes, it's must. But it has to be, uh, I believe, it depends on the neighborhood. If your neighbors don't want it, I, I think uh, it shouldn't be there because we don't want to create violence against the neighbors. However, if if the, the, the land is zoned in a way, if the neighborhoods are zoned in a way that where we can put secondary suites, which are legal, it can create more uh, tax revenue for the city, which can create more easy access for the safety. So nobody nobody's like getting hurt or fire in case of fire it's a easy access out if those measures are in place and if people are okay I think we should do that in order to address the affordability of homes that's all we have so far for questions that's they're it really wow they're quiet they're, they're they're so many of them out there just quiet <laughs> Nobody wants to see politicians. We we gotta watch the Golden Globe guys. Like, oh, okay. Well, they are kind of funny, no, you guys. They are very, very funny. So you guys can throw a joke in there. Somebody had a. I'm gonna ask Donovan another question here from the um, JCC, JCAA. I don't know what I'm saying. How could the association like the JCCA do more in the community? Uh I think all community associations have the opportunity to, to A, I think promote diversity. And I think Calgary is a great example of the power of diversity. So I think the JCAA, like other community associations, should get involved in whether it's municipal, provincial programs and drive those back into 
our sector of the community. So I think our responsibility is to ensure that Jamaicans and people interested in, in Jamaica understand some of the programs that are around and how they can benefit from them. I think another part of what I'm going to call our responsibility is to ensure that people who have migrated to this country see themselves as contributors to the community and not just here to, to get the benefit. We were talking earlier about voting, That's right. right? I think we should ensure that our constituents, people in our community, understand those responsibilities and get involved in building however small that contribution is. Because what's the point of being in the community and not contributing to community, but wanting it to be better? Mm. And, and I'm gonna answer that a little bit because ha I'm in the community with, mm -hmm. with, the, with my store here. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff that I wasn't aware of. I felt like as I started to do this show, I'm realizing that I lived under a rock. Yep. So how do people, because it's, it's because I, I, I reach out now to find different, different people mm -hmm. and programs. Mm -hmm. But if the people aren't doing that and they don't have a, a show, how do they find these information? Because I've gone online before and I didn't find anything. And, and that's a great question. Uh, I, I said earlier, this year we invested in establishing a brand new website. And that's the, the Jamaican Association now being in social media. Mm -hmm. You know, we're on Facebook, we're on other things, but also we're getting out. So you we're guys are getting out there more for people to oh, be yeah. able to find them. Because I wasn't able. I, I chased him I chased I chased Mr. Parr down in the Obsidian Awards. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. And and that's because I am such a go getter. I think I am. I just don't know when to quit. <laughs> you know, actually the reality was that uh, I had such a bad hair. Uh, wow! <laughs> She's like, I think you can need a, you can uh, use yeah, your hair. Yeah, yeah, I'm I like, oh, yeah. that's been the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I did tell you about your yeah, hair. Eh? Yeah. I feel so bad uh, being in being in salon and stuff. When you look at somebody, you don't actually look at their eyes. You look at their hair first, I'm and like, you think, "Oh man, oh, where did he get that line from?" Or yeah, who like, cut that? Eyebrow, you know, right? It's like, come on, man. Yeah. But that was my line to get into, get in, get it in there, so it's you can be sitting good. right where you are with me today. It's all good. It's all <laughs> but again, you guys, these gentlemen are here to inform you of all the all. Well, not everything, because none of us know everything. But they are here to inform you of things that you guys need to know to make you successful. So you guys need to answer the question. I think people a little bit clamped up because we yeah. said the <laughs> you know they're kind of are, are, are the opportunities to connect right yeah. so you know so I look at it also from the other side of saying you know what if we've got people out there on the live listening that have ways that they can contribute Tribute to the community yeah. you know because it is not you know my thing is it's not necessarily about being on a board or being the president it's about participating and if there are simple ways that they can participate, you know, put those forward and let's capitalize on it. Because I think with collective effort, we can achieve more than, you know, a few individuals who are always championing the cause, trying to achieve it all. Because I don't think we can, we can get as far as we could if we had more participation. Do we have another question? We do. Faith has got questions for us now. <laughs> um, regarding the uh, shared homes, people purchasing homes to help them reduce their burdens. She also says we need to think about our current state of our economy. Um, and a uh, question she has is for Parb, what differences are you making in the community today? Well, wow. you know, f first of all, like it's, a, it's, it's a loaded question. And that's okay. Uh, first of all, like, you know, my job is to you know, represent uh, my people and listen to them and what are they facing and how their day-to-day uh, -day life is going and whether it's uh, they're facing uh, problems with their uh, education of their child or the busing issues of a child. Like daycare. And daycare. And you know what, we, we often think like, oh, you know, as an MLA, as a member parliament, like you get to make like all those big decisions. Of course you do make, get to make those big decisions. But like the smaller decisions like, you know, putting a, a park for kids to play, you know, putting a benches, where the seniors can sit like all those like minor things happen all the time which like don't even make the top 10 list mm -hmm. kind of thing right so then one I, I'm always like dealing with those issues second like dealing with issues like uh, uh, abuse people are like temporary foreign workers and you know yes. guys 
That's what guide, I guide, yes. Guiding them in the right direction. If somebody charged somebody and then get, connecting them with the authorities and whether it's a language uh, barrier, whether it's a cultural barrier, right? So those are like the community community level things like how we're doing, uh, somebody said that, you know, we need uh, a study done on a stoning trail for noise, you know, so we, we help those like, you know, like, talk to the transportation so say like we need to conduct that if if the resident who are behind Stony Trail are not happy, maybe we, it's it's about time that we we pay attention, we look at those issues and say, do we need a sound barrier walls? Mm -hmm. Like you know, those are those are the constant issues at the community level. Right? And when it comes uh, um, as an MLA in the in the legislature, which is my job as a, as a lawmaker, that my job is to listen to my constituent and my community and, and bring them like, what is your take on carbon tax? What is your take on minimum wage uh, hike? So FLTS said like, I can't afford minimum wage hike from, you know, X dollar to Y dollar. So then I'm gonna, whenever there's a debate about minimum wage, I'm gonna talk to, talk to the labor minister. I'm gonna talk to the finance minister. Say like, look, business men or women in my community, they're hurting. They don't want this. It's gonna kill them. Their business, either she's gonna have to raise the the price of the haircut, or she's gonna have to lay off people. So those are those are the those are the issues that I have to deal as a as a day to day MLA. Hopefully, I answer your question. Yes, um, I find that I don't know. I mean, do you think in 2017 we will see a rise in the economy, or do you think it'll stay kind of level, or it'll increase, like? I, I mean, like, you know... I, I find that there's going to be a lot of small business out of business. That's right. Yeah. And, I mean, like, obviously, none of us have a crystal ball here. Uh, I wish, I, wish yeah, yeah. I would have, like, bought a 649 in Quebec uh, yesterday. Or I bought a 649 today, but... Donovan, what do you think about the economy? Do you think it'll go up or it'll come down? It's going to take uh, some time. You think so? Yeah, I mean, well, my take on the economy is maybe a little different because uh, I... I think people create opportunity by generating ideas, innovation, putting their energy behind stuff. And while the macroeconomy might still have certain variables, it is not a limitation for success. It doesn't stop us from thinking of new ways, new services, new things to do. Because even in the face of a challenging economy, there are organizations, there are businesses, there are people out there that are being successful. And I think it's important for us as people's, uh, people individually, but also as a community to challenge ourselves, mm. right? To not feel that it's all doomsday and gloom, but that there is positive opportunities that we need to look at and find and invest in. Because to me, that's where I see the biggest weakness, you know, from a, from a very micro level, yes. where we are hoping that somebody else creates wealth for us. We're hoping that you know, there's some magic and somebody else's crystal ball drives our opportunities. But what if you're working, like I work seven days a week. Yep. And you just, it seems that you just, you're right here. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot yeah. to be here. Yeah, yeah you never but get I, ahead. But I cannot move. Yeah. But so I challenge what? you to say that I'm sure, based on some of the things you and I have discussed recently, that you look at 27 and 2017, you see some new opportunities and some new areas that you can take on, right? Yes. That have potential have possibility yeah and i'm, I'm and i'm looking however at you know and uh, you know as you said like uh, sorry to interrupt no, you no that's but, fine that's uh, fine i think it's important that you know we, when you're talking about the macro mm -hmm. uh, level the government doesn't create jobs government creates an environment right. right for for the favorable businesses to thrive yep. exactly so when when we don't have that 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 environment i don't know if Odia is gonna go Survive. to bank and 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 invest another two hundred thousand dollar in our business because mm -hmm. she's not certain about it. She's I'm not, not certain because yeah, there's nobody like, on my plateau. They're not looking out for that's me. That's right, right. They're looking out for so who is when we have that fear in the in the and the fear is actually real based mm -hmm. on based on the, the the society based on the policies the, the current mm -hmm. government has. Yeah. So that's what create the the you know the the impact on the economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
if the government says like, yeah, we're going to be doing this, we're going to be doing those, like the giving a positive uh, announcement, which will help thrive businesses, economy is going to grow on its own. Yeah, I, I think the government has a role to play. I'm also strongly a believer that it is not the sole uh, driver. Absolutely. And, and at the end of 2017, yeah. there will be people in this city, in this province, who have found ways to be successful. Mm -hmm. And Althea, myself, uh, others will make that choice as to are we going to find new ways that are not solely dependent on the yeah. environment? Yeah, and that's what happens. Or, or so we have to move into different areas because the government has made it hard yeah. for uh, a sole proprietor or a yeah. small, small business, business yeah. to stay in. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people are trying to cut corners so that they don't have to pay back all the money right. they made for the year for the tax. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that again, how do you survive? You move into TV show and hope you get paid lots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had to give a little bit of that. Yeah, lit um, indeed, yeah. Do you have questions? I think you have questions. I do. Um, Faith says, thank you, Parp, for your um, previous answer. She also uh, comments, our community focuses on oil and gas. That's and right. We need to create opportunities, but we're not empowering folks to do this. Um, her comment is, she wants to put you on the spot. Next month is Black History Month. That's what right. are your contributions to Canada Wide Celebration? What's my contribution to Canada Wide Celebration? Yeah, for Black History Month. You know what? I, I haven't. I'm going to be very honest about it. I, I thought about it. I was thinking about it actually uh, after when we got into uh, January. And I've been like very sick since like. Uh, past Christmas. He really was. When I called him, he was dying. And but he said he's going to get well for me. Sorry. Yes, I did. I, yeah, I, you I did tried. get well for you, me. I appreciate this is, it. This is not my actual voice. My <laughs> actual voice is like, trust me, it's like... <laughs> it's soft. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, <laughs> it's lit. It, it is lit. It is lit. So my uh, my voice is still like kind of like chirping. But uh, you know, I haven't paid uh, much attention, but I think it's, it's very important uh, a milestone Canada is turning 150 years yep, yep. right and uh, no I, I haven't thought about it I will uh, I will uh, do something about it I, and, I think and here's an opportunity thanks for raising it yeah. Faith. I'll chat yes. to no. uh, and there, yes, I, 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 was, I, was, I was thinking about it <laughs> and then while you guys chat please don't forget me host 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 hello <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about it that uh, like what I'm gonna be doing in this and that because you know, as, as an immigrant, new immigrant came from, you know, India like 15, 16, 17 years ago, and you're like a part of the, uh, you know, the um, the 905th MLA sworn in ever in uh, in province of Alberta. Wow. And and I think that's a very humbling experience for me. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, say so like, oh, what can I do to make it more special for yeah. this land? for this country that the country has given me everything I, I wanted. Yeah. I had to work hard for it, yeah. but but the opportunities were there, yeah. right? So I, I will be looking into that, and I will try my best <coughs> to, uh, that I don't miss this opportunity. And, and I'm not, I'm not going to get this opportunity <coughs> ever again. Excuse me. And since, since Faith raised the question about Black History Month, I'm going to take a plug here. Absolutely, so, so, plug so the, on in. Yeah, so the JCAA on the last Saturday of every month, so I think it's the 28th of February, Right, we will have a celebration, an event that focuses on Black, Black History Month. So every year we highlight achievements from uh, the Black community, right? And on the last Saturday of February, uh, we will have an event that focuses on that. Check our website, jcalberta.com, right? And there'll be more information on that. And Mr. Parr will be joining us as well as with Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Um, we will be there together to do a live Sunday tea. Remember. There you go. Um, let me see if I have any more questions. We're going to quickly wrap up here quickly. Uh, just Faith says uh, we need your support, Parb, in Black History Month. Though. Absolutely. We need yeah. to uplift the community. We need to talk. We need to meet. Any Anytime. You know what? Anytime I, 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 I can be a assistant uh, to Faith or any community member, please feel free to give me a call. It is, it is, it'll be my absolute honor. To, to you know to meet you guys to address any issue you guys have obviously I don't have the magic wand however I believe when we when we get together as a community the human human power is strong enough that we can come up with some creative ways to solve our problem in a community that that's what I'm a firm believer of okay 
So anytime you have anything, uh, please give me a call and uh, my office on uh, Monterey Park uh, Co-op Plaza. Feel free to give us a call. You can find my info on uh, uh, you know internet or Altia or do I want like. Yeah, so. <laughs> so you guys, we have two minutes to wrap up. I would love to thank these two wonderful gentlemen for joining me tonight and making me look good. <laughs> oh, lit. <laughs> and lit. It's just lit. <laughs> and hashtag lit. Hashtag lit. <laughs> Ash, yes, it is. Hashtag lit. Hashtag Sunday tea. You guys, I'm trying my best to, to form a platform for us. Um, for the Caribbeans as well as for everybody else that would like to join us in the world not just the Caribbean But for the Caribbean that feel that they're not doing anything or they can't move or there's no place to get out We have place to go. We have people that can inform us. We have people that can help us We have Donovan here that would help you even if it wasn't about um, The JJC the JCAA right yeah. he would still give you guys information to help you guys to get to the next level. I will try to do as best as I can. Um, so I really thank everybody for coming out and watching us. You guys stayed steady today, but you were really quiet. There was a lot of you guys, but you were really quiet, really strange. Anyways, you guys can follow me on Facebook. You guys can follow me on Instagram. You guys can follow me on YouTube, and you guys can follow me on Twitter. Ah, lit! <laughs> Do you guys want? They're laughing at me. They love my lit. Everybody loves my lit. I think it might be my tongue. I don't think it's my lit. But anyways, I'm gonna let this gentleman say goodbye and thank you for having them. We'll turn the camera if you have a last word. No, thank you very much. It's a, it's an honor to be here, and uh, you know, as I said. Uh, together we can make a community stronger, so anything uh, our office can assist you with, uh, please feel free to give us a call. Thank yeah. you. My pleasure being here. Thanks, Althea. You know, we're in our assist program. Uh, check out the JCA website, jcaalberta.com, right? Lots of information we want to share, and we're open to feedback and participation. And Donovan is around. He is available. If you call him he will, or email him, he will definitely get back to you. If not today, the next day. And so would Par. If you email him, he will get back to you. And if you call me, text me, message me, Facebook me, YouTube, I'm going to get back to you somehow. So, you know, you guys, you know it's Sunday tea. I'm going to start my music. You know how I go out. Woo! I'm going to get up really nice and dainty because I don't want you guys looking under my skirt because it ain't right. No, it's not. Here we go. Sunday tea, you guys. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next week. Bye. Four people, you guys don't want to leave. Look at all the love. I love you guys too. Five. Mm, yummy, yes, he said to you. Woo!